Hey, what's up guys? So I just wanted to make a quick video here giving you the basics on stepper motors, which are different from regular motors in that you can control the shaft in a very precise way, which is why you find these kind of motors in uh, 3D printers, uh, CNC machines, printers and scanners and any kind of machine that you really need to move something in a really precise way. Uh, they're a little bit more difficult to control, but I'm going to show you how to control one just using switches. And I've got one mounted here uh, with a little uh, dial here so that we can actually step through the sequence and control a stepper motor directly just using switches. And you should be able to take that and then write your own code for the Arduino or any other microcontroller to control a stepper motor. So let's first go to the whiteboard and uh, talk about the theory a little bit. Okay, so what I've drawn up here is a very crude and rough diagram of a stepper motor. And uh, the basic idea is, is the same. You know, we're trying to control the magnetic fields in the stator to control the rotor, okay, which is connected to the shaft. So by controlling these magnetic fields, we can rotate that rotor around clockwise or counterclockwise by sequencing the, the magnetic fields. And what I'm showing here is a bipolar stepper motor and they call it a bipolar stepper motor because you need two polarities essentially to be able to drive these coils. So I need to drive this coil either positive and minus like that or minus and positive. So it's bipolar, I gotta flip it both ways. Same thing over here. So you have, you have two sets of coils and typically you'll find bipolar stepper motors with four leads right, for the two sets of coils. Unipolar stepper motors are basically the same idea except that they give you a center tap wire that come out there. And sometimes this wire here is actually connected internally to this one's center tap. Okay, so then you would have a five wire uh, unipolar stepper motor. The reason they call it a unipolar is because then Oh, this drawing's getting a little complicated here. Because okay, so I just redrew that so it's a little bit easier to see. I was getting a little busy. But uh, basically what you would do with the unipolar stepper motor is you connect the center tap to your high side voltage. So I'm showing it here connected to VCC. And then if you want to control the polarity or the fields, you basically just have to ground this. So if you wanted that one, you would control that field and then this is positive minus. And then the same thing over here. If you wanted to switch this field, then you let up on that and then you ground this side here. So then it's positive minus and then the field direction changes and you're able to basically control the polarity. It's a little bit easier to control unipolar stepper motors just because you only have four transistors, right? You just have to ground either one of these sets of uh, sides of the coil. On the bipolar stepper motor, since you have to control the whole polarity, you actually need two full H bridges, okay? So um, that's basically the difference between the uh, unipolar and uh, bipolar. The bipolar stepper motor can deliver more torque because you can take advantage of the entire coil, right, since you're controlling over the entire thing. but since you have the entire coil to control, which gives you more torque, it's more inductance, so that that may hurt you if you're doing a high speed a application where you really need to rotate this fast and apply the magnetic field and remove it quickly. So, now let's just talk a little bit about sequencing. So there's, uh, you may hear when you're looking at uh, bipolar stepper motors or unipolar stepper motors, is a half step or full step or micro step and that is how you step the rotor by controlling the magnetic fields in the stator so if we just look here for a second and say that this if we just energize this coil at some polarity the rotor will lock on to wherever that is okay and then if we remove that 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 voltage across that coil and then apply voltage across this coil, the rotor will step a full step. So that's full step control and it may rotate this way 
If it was the other direction, this polarity was flipped, and then it would go in the opposite direction. So that's sort of how you sequence it. And once we go to the breadboard and I show you how to control a stepper motor with just switches, you'll actually see that that you know we have this this coil locked in, and then if we let go and then you know apply voltage across uh, across this coil in one way versus the other way, we can control the direction. Okay. So that would be a full step, and usually these stepper motors are rated. Uh, you know, there's there's the uh, the markings on the stepper motor. I'll tell you what a full step is. You know, in degrees, and I think the one I've got is 1.8 degrees. So you, what a half step is 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 if we have left the the voltage applied across this top coil and then applied this voltage here. So now you have both coils energized and the instead of it rotating full 90 degrees this the rotor in there it would rotate in between it like right here and that would be a half step or not a half yeah a half step okay which is nice too because that gives you a lot of torque in there since you always have you know these two coils energized okay um, so now let me uh, well, you know, one of the things we're not going to get into too much is microstepping. But microstepping is basically controlling the voltage in an analog kind of way to move the rotor within any of uh, any part of this region here, you know, within that half step. So we won't get into that too much, but I think at this point we're ready to move on to the, uh, the demo. Actually, let me give you a quick schematic of what I've got over there. Okay, so basically this is the schematic for what I've got over on my bench here to control a bipolar stepper motor. So it is four wires. I've got the two H bridges laid out on my breadboard. And uh, you got to make sure that you add these diodes in, these anti-parallel diodes, because as you're applying the, the, the voltage to the coils, you're building up that magnetic field. And then when you open the switch up, that magnetic field collapses and it generates a huge voltage. In fact, when I first tested this out, I didn't have the diodes in and my computer speakers were popping as I was letting go of these switches. So make sure that you've got the diodes in. Um, but basically, if this looks a little confusing, it's, it's pretty simple. It is two H bridges, each one connected to a coil on the bipolar stepper motor. And this is a motor I pulled out of an old scanner. I don't know where it came from. I don't even have a part number for it. Um, but if you just if you do come across a bipolar stepper motor, you're not sure which coil is which or what the wires do. If it is four wires, you can just ohm out the uh, the coils. So attach you know an ohmmeter to one wire and then connect the other side to the other wires until you you know you come to some resistance, right? So. Um, five wire unipolar stepper motors can be kind of tricky. You actually have to just hook them up and test them because the center tab wire is, is connected on both sides of the coils. So try to find a data sheet if you come across one of those motors, it'll, it'll make your life a whole lot easier. So this is the, the setup and basically if we wanted to control the coil with uh, positive and minus polarity like that, we just push in this switch and this switch so that we get current like that. If we wanted to flip the polarity for something like this, then we activate this switch and this switch, okay? So it goes there, around, and then down. You really gotta make sure that you don't push both of these switches at the same time, because that would be a dead, nut, a dead short from VCC up here to ground. Okay, and the same thing goes for over here as well. So now I think we're ready to go. Okay, so here's the setup. And uh, over here we have the switches and diodes wired with two H bridges wired into the bipolar stepper motor, which I have here, I'll show you on the back. And that's mounted to a piece of cardboard here with uh, a little circle and the degrees so that we can actually see what a full step looks like, what a half step looks like. And I've got a, a piece of wire here mounted to the uh, to the shaft so that we can uh, can watch that. 
So uh, I've got three volts applied across the two H bridges. And uh, what's interesting about stepper motors is that if you rotate the shaft, you can kind of feel the steps in there. And those are full steps. So every time you feel a little click in there, that is 1.8 degrees, at least for this stepper motor. So I have it set to zero degrees, which locks at zero degrees when you apply this coil here with that polarity. So it's locked in right now. Now if I rotate it, it's, it's really, really locked in there. It's hard to move it. Okay. Now on the, like we talked about, uh, to control it in either direction, the other coil now has to be energized. So we can go either with, uh, with that polarity and it rotates it to the left and you can see it's kind of, it kind of did rotate at about 1.8 degrees. So now if I go back and then go in the other direction, oops, well, that was the same direction. That way, now it rotates uh, clockwise at 1.8 degrees. And then you can sort of just walk through the sequence, okay? So I'm just alternating the uh, polarities of these coils. And then if I ever wanna switch directions, I just, oops, did it wrong that time. I just flipped the way I was doing, oops, my sequence. So it's kinda hard to do while you're talking here because you have to kind of remember which polarity you were at. Okay. Oops. Let me just do that. Get it back to uh, get back to zero here. Okay. Now we're back at zero. Okay. So you can see how you can rotate it one direction and then flip direction just based on the sequence. And over here in your real design would be a uh, stepper driver. So something like the easy driver or something that you just feed the, the A, B, the A, A naught and B, B naught signals, which are the signals that would drive the H bridge MOSFETs, okay? And there's even easier uh, stepper drivers out there that you just feed basically uh, a square wave into and a direction bit and then it takes care of the sequencing and then the more advanced stepper drivers will actually handle the micro stepping for you as well. But speaking of steps, now we can look at what a half step looks like. So right now we're locked in, but instead of letting go of this, we'll leave that locked in and then apply voltage across the second coil at the same time. And you can see that it's moving in between a step. And then if I let go of the coil on the left, now it completed that full step. So you can see that as I do this, it moves the half step into the full step. Okay, so now let's go in the other direction. Okay, so I apply it, it's in between there, and then I let go of the left side and then it completes the full step. So now let's, let's, let's go this direction and I'll show you We'll just keep rotating it. Okay, so we're controlling that in half steps. So right now, what's one of the nice things too about the half steps is that I'm since I'm applying here, before I was measuring with just one coil energized, it's about a half an amp. With both of the coils energized, it's pulling about 1.16 amps here. So you will need more power to half step too as well. But the other thing too though, is when you have both of these coils energized, it's holding torque is even more, is even more significant. So that's another thing to keep in mind. But basically that's the, uh, the, the, uh, the idea there. And this kind of helps you understand, you know, what, what the switch is and what the H bridge is actually doing to control the stepper motor. So now from this, you can write your, uh, your state machine to control a stepper motor if you wanted to do it discreetly with MOSFETs, which I may do here in a uh, part two video. But uh, anyway, that's just a quick and dirty video on stepper motors. Thanks for watching.